first coffee of the day. Two weeks ago today was St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Yo, from the Vikings. <laughs> Hope you're all well. Happy Paddy's Day. And uh, we had some spaghetti because we live with Italians now. Um, hope you're all well, happy Paddy's Day and I... And for a few days prior to that, I was up and down. I had a cough and a bit of runny nose. A bit of tightness in my chest, it's a slight pain under my ribs. I felt like I'd done a workout or like I'd pulled a muscle. Nothing crazy, nothing too extreme, nothing out of the ordinary. But then on this day two weeks ago, I had a fever. I didn't feel I didn't feel good, I didn't feel too good. The next morning I decided to call on my doctor and explain my symptoms as it didn't seem like I was overreacting. I had enough of the symptoms that, that I I should be concerned and, and take the right precautions. By this point, I had a headache, fatigue, joint pains, the chest pain, the fever, under the lower rib tightness, that was a bit strange, a bit of coughing, dizziness, that's, that was weird. Coming out of winter, a lot of people have runny noses and blocked sinuses, and so it's hard to differentiate the difference. Um, I've had a lot of these things on and off since November anyway. You know, the normal cold like symptoms. Too fast, <coughs> I was told by my doctor not to be too worried, but it sounded like I had it, and uh, that I should stay home and I'll have a test in a week. So I decided to come home. I was never called in for that test. Um, and a few days ago, I received a text saying that they were only going to call people in that were showing some serious symptoms. I am happy with that. As I do not want to take up time and space when there's people out there really suffering at the moment. The first week of staying quarantined in this room, I was going insane. Those first few days when I didn't know if I had it, feeling dizzy, feeling weak, feeling useless. I felt compressed and kind of inflamed and so I was taking paracetamol um, once or twice a day first three days. I felt very isolated. I found it really hard to to be away from everyone and and I was over obsessing with everything. I was watching the news, I was trying to figure out how to get control of the situation. I was thinking ahead of like society and my family, of money, my job, my health, people's health around me. I was thinking should I even be home? What if I pass on to my parents? There was all this paranoia and obsession and then I realized For some people, they're gonna to have to either speed up or slow down. And what I mean by this is, for some of you, you may need to do more of the leisurely things, like learn to meditate, uh, to relax and watch a movie every night, you know? That's maybe what you're lacking in your life and you need more of that. For others, maybe you're not looking after your health as well as you could. Maybe you're not doing as much things in your life that you really should be, that you want to be doing. And, and so maybe you need to start being a bit more proactive in your life and like take it in your hands and be like, okay, well, I've no other choice now, but to start exercising, start looking after my health, uh, start having a routine and waking up every morning at the same time. Ways to have fun and ways to be productive. This situation is forcing us to stay inside. And so use it as an opportunity to self-reflect. Yes, I'm using a mirror to make my point. No, I do not feel bad about it. 
In a world where there's such a rat race, with money and the economy and the system that we've created where everyone's just waking up and going to work, I was sleep deprived for most of 2019. I probably partied too much, I probably pushed my body too much and expected too much of myself and stressed too much and became a lot of what I never thought I would become and, 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 and what I didn't like. The whiteboard just over there that um, has become my, my ritual, my daily ritual. The list consists of a few varying things that I think are extremely important from mind, body, spirit, soul, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I start my morning off with meditation. Meditation is huge for calming your mind, especially in these like stressful times when you don't know what's happening. And then I do breathing, breath work. Again, the same as meditation, but I'm a bit more physical. Um, so I'm slowly waking up to my day. I'll do a Wim Hof breath. Look up Wim Hof. He has proven now scientifically that you can boost your immune system by doing a type of breath work. It only takes 15 minutes. Then I go into move. This is gonna be like a type of yoga type of thing. Uh, just stretching out my body, getting blood flowing. Then power, this is more exercise. This is like push-ups. This is like sweating. This again, boosting your immune system. If you are not feeling too well and you have a fever and stuff like that, if you have a tightness of breathing, I would avoid this part. I would still do these, but I would avoid this because your body's already trying to heal. And the last thing you want is to set it back too much. And you know, especially if you have muscle, joint pains, anything like that. You know, the first week of being isolated, I did not do any extreme exercise. So clean, clean is about, you know, once you get out of your bed, it's the first thing you should kind of do. Set your system right, you know, it's about organization. It's about, again, it's about controlling your world, controlling your space so that you have a cool, calm, collected approach to everything else you do. Don't just have a hot shower, have a cold shower. Make sure you get the cold water on your body. Again, Vim Hof, the benefits of cold exposure for your immune system. If you are already sick, do not maybe take cold showers. Another thing that I would throw into the mix, fasting. I do intermittent fasting, just the basic cycle of uh, 16 hours to eight. Proper kicked it into gear when I felt like I was sick. This means I usually don't eat after the hours of eight or nine. And then I won't eat food until after lunchtime, around 12 to one. I'll only drink water in that cycle, a little bit of coffee before my lunch, but that's it. So I've been writing. Even if you're not a writer, even if you don't want to write a screenplay or a book or a movie ever someday, I still think you should write. It's so good to get your thoughts out on a piece of paper as early as possible in the day. Write three crappy pages a day. Tim Ferriss recommends that. Three crappy pages. If you make that your goal, then you've already set the bar low enough that you can definitely achieve it. Read, I've started reading more. So try and read five pages a day. And then create, around this time I start to create, it means to edit. Uh, start creating something that gives me joy, that makes me feel alive, that you know is my true passion. For me, that's making videos like this, editing a photo and putting it up on Instagram. Drawing again. I can't explain how good it has been to, to, to rediscover my, my passion for drawing. I get so much joy out of making little things and putting them out there. So, find your version of create. Yeah, and pretty much the rest of the day involves me just creating and eating good food. Nutrition's been huge. I've been avoiding a lot of sugars, breaking my fast with garlic and honey, a lot of anti-inflammatories, a lot of greens, a lot of turmeric and ginger, mostly vegan diet. Right now it is time for me to break my fast, so I'm going to eat and uh, watch some shit on the laptop. You may not know you have it or show any symptoms for a while or ever, but you may still have it. And so it's your responsibility to behave as if you do have it. That's what the masks are for. The masks will not protect you from getting it, but they will protect you from spreading it because you can get it in from your mouth or your nose, obviously if that's covered, but you can also get it into your eyes. That's why it's important that we keep this social distancing so we don't spread it. You may not get it or get it bad or show any symptoms, but if you're not being responsible, you could spread it onto other people. And the main issue is that too many people are, are being, it's so contagious that people are getting it very quick and then we're clogging up the hospitals quicker than they have the staff or the facilities to take care of. And so people will unnecessarily die. Uh, hospitals have 
everyday shit to take care of. You know, someone falls off a ladder, someone gets injured, someone has a heart attack, diabetes, uh, babies being born, you know, just everyday shit the hospitals have to do anyway. So we shouldn't clog it up with more of the coronavirus. It is a pandemic, it is inevitable, but it can be less of a disaster if we all take our own responsibility into hand, which is to stay at home and to to find our own habits to keep us sane. That's our bit, that's, that's what we can do. This is our, in this war, this is our weapon. Our weapon is, is to stay at home and do the best that we can from here and reach out to people as well, like online and make sure people are doing good around you. I appreciate that, like, you know, now I can't go and see my granny. It's like, she's living alone. Of course, I really wanna see my granny, you know? I wanna see my girlfriend. I haven't seen her now in two weeks and friends, friends that you kinda, you'll be like, ah, oh, we'll make plans next time and you, whatever. And then all of a sudden you realize like, fuck, they're good people. I really miss them. Like. I want them in my life, I want to see them. And so it puts a lot of things into perspective. Maybe you aren't quarantined to a room. Maybe you have a whole house. Um, maybe you live in the countryside and you have a garden. Go out into the world and, and, and or don't, don't leave the house. <laughs> um, but I hope, I hope you and uh, yours are staying safe and are doing well. <laughs> can all come together out of this and, and hopefully be stronger. By the time it's all over with, in the next month or two, um, it will be sad, you know, there is people currently who have lost family members and they're not able to have a funeral. Um, so it's a very strange time to, tr to, to mourn. I want to encourage you that, that we need hope, we need faith, we need, we need to turn bad situations into better, stronger, positive situations for ourselves and then, and then spread that. So now two weeks later, what am I feeling? Not feeling really anything. There's still a kind of a, a sensation around my ribs, but I don't, I don't know what that could be necessarily. But I feel good. I've been the last few days. I've been upping up my my stress levels with exercise, just to see if my body can handle it, and my joints and my muscles in particular, and my energy levels. You want to heal from this as quickly as possible. You know, your immune system cannot get strong if you're stressed. So plenty of rest, plenty of good food, plenty of meditation. Play video games, whatever the f So because I rang my doctor today and I told them about how I'm feeling, if it's been four days since you've had a fever, if you're starting to show little to no symptoms and you're feeling good and you've been isolated for two weeks, you are safe to leave quarantine. That means I can now walk outside that door, which after two weeks of being in this room, I'm, I, I don't know. You'd feel like I'm like, I can't wait to go. And I'm in, in a way, of course I can't, but I'm also like, we to hold the people close to me and to have a drink. <laughs>